Hello and welcome to the PHP and MySQL video-based training. This lesson will discuss what the course covers. The course covers course setup using XAMP. XAMP is a package which includes Apache, MySQL, PHP, and Perl. We will talk about installing XAMP on three different platforms, Windows, Mac, and Linux. We will then discuss configuration. Discussion includes PHP, MySQL, and Apache. We will then move to a discussion of various editors and IDEs, which stands for Integrated Development Environments. We'll talk about saving your code and searching the PHP and MySQL documentation, how to get help, and also finding course files. Throughout the course, there will be a lab which concludes each section. The lab is aiming towards developing a comprehensive website. Building in small pieces, one piece at a time, by the end of the course, you will have completed a comprehensive website, which looks something like this. This particular website features a shopping cart, a members area, logging in, a list of products, a contact form, which includes sending an email, and a search capability which allows you to search the products database and get a list of products. The basics includes things that are basic to the PHP language, such as data types, arithmetic operations, codes, constants, various types of output commands such as printf, commands which allow you to work with strings, and debugging considerations. Again, at the end of the section, as with all sections, there will be a lab which moves you in the direction of building the comprehensive website. The section on arrays talks about the various types of arrays, numeric, associative, assigning values, multi-dimensional arrays, searching, sorting, removing, finding differences, merging, and that sort of thing. The lab will give you some ideas as to how an array can be used when generating a drop-down menu as part of your website. The section on looping and branching teaches you how to manipulate the flow of control within your PHP program using things such as if, else, else if, switch, looping, where you can run through the same set of commands a certain number of times, while loops, do while loops, for each loops, which are used to move through arrays, and also things that allow you to branch off in different directions. Finally, again, the lab will tie everything together and show you how looping and branching can be used to make your website more effective in addressing the needs of your customers. This is followed by a section on functions. Functions are where most of your code will reside. This chapter will include discussions of built in PHP functions creating your own, returning values, passing what are called parameters to functions to make them more useful, using parameters by reference, a variable number of parameters, and a concept which is referred to as the global variable. Finally, the lab will have you create a function which allows you to paginate rows of data, in this case, generating a list of products where you can page through the products one set at a time. There is then a chapter on object-oriented programming. Object-oriented programming is a way of encapsulating your code into what are called classes, which allows you to develop a PHP program more effectively. Also, working with objects, you'll find that there are many, many new built-in classes in the PHP language, which will facilitate building your website. So we will discuss things such as defining your own classes, what are properties and methods, visibility level, building classes that can inherit from other classes, exceptions, which is a means of handling mistakes or errors inside your code, and finally something called model view controller, which is very popular when developing websites. In the lab, you will then break up your code using MVC principles to more effectively build a website. The course also includes a chapter on external libraries. External libraries include PHP extensions written in C language, which are then activated and enabled on your web server. We also discuss libraries that are written in PHP itself. We talk about how to bring these libraries into your code, which then makes designing websites much easier. 
we talk about PECL and PEAR. PECL stands for PHP Extension Community Library, and PEAR is PHP Extension Archive Repository. In the lab, you will then add a PECL extension to your website and also utilize a pair package. The chapter on files discusses the two different file families. The family of commands that starts with F, the family of commands that includes the word file. We discuss the underlying subsystem known as streams. We talk about the error log and then using the various commands to parse a directory. In the lab, you will be developing a function which reads a CSV file which contains a list of products for the lab website. The chapter on MySQL discusses managing a MySQL database. This includes topics such as understanding Relational Database Management System, or RDBMS, terminology, command line access, a web-based interface developed in PHP called PHP MyAdmin, configuration, creating a database, managing what are called tables, which are smaller sections of a database which contain specific information, such as user information or product information, we talk about indexes, establishing relationships between tables, and also something that is referred to as a constraint. In the lab, you will be defining tables and relationships in order to build the Suites Complete website. The chapter on SQL, Structured Query Language, will show you how to master various SQL commands which are essential in order to communicate with a database. These commands include select, which retrieves data, insert, update, and delete, which add, edit, and remove data, and also advanced queries using join, which allows you to query multiple tables at the same time. In the lab, you will then be creating a series of SQL statements, which will later be utilized in order to manage the database, which will be associated with the project website. This is followed by a chapter on PHP and MySQL, which shows you how to generate PHP commands, which can then read, write, update, and delete data from a database table. We also discuss working with multiple tables, and finally, in the lab, building a query form, which will search a database. There's a chapter on regular expressions. Regular expressions are used to create patterns that allow you to match information that will be supplied by your users. Regular expressions are also used for a process that is known as form validation. In other words, when users fill out information on a form, you need to verify that the information follows expected parameters. We then talk about the various regular expression command sets, how to define a pattern, using commands such as pregmatch, pregmatchAll, pregreplace. We talk about search and replace. And finally, building a regular expression to validate a postal code. Again, thinking about the project website where users enter in address information. How do you validate the information and make sure that it follows the proper format? There's a section on email where we discuss how to send email from PHP. We talk about external mail libraries, which make the sending of email much easier. This includes things such as adding an attachment to email and sending email using a protocol referred to as SMTP. In the lab, you will be creating some lines of code which will allow your program to send a confirmation email if somebody wants to sign up to your website. The section on date and time talks about things such as timestamps, which is a way that computers store date and time information internally. We talk about the date command the date time class, and how to perform date arithmetic. In the review and exercise, you will be working date and time information into the project website. The chapter on web operations discusses basic PHP mechanisms for reading data that is supplied by the users, which is stored in what we call the dollar underscore superglobals. We talk about handling cookies, how to create them, how to read them. We discuss managing sessions, which is a one-to-one -one relationship between the user and your website 
and it allows you to store information between visits. We talk about what are called headers and how headers can be set to perform certain operations, such as redirecting from one web page to another, how to read the header information, and also things such as output buffering, which makes performance considerably faster, and deploying your application to a production website. In the lab, we incorporate these concepts into a user authentication system where people can log into the website and you will then be able to recognize the fact that they have logged in. The section on web forms discusses how to capture data from a form, how to work with various form input elements, which include select tags, which are used to generate drop down menus, checkboxes, radio buttons file uploads, and finally, three lessons on securing form data, inbound filtering, validating data, and escaping of output. In the lab, you will be building a user profile form, which will then be incorporated into the project website. The last section, of course, discusses the author. This concludes what this course covers.